And this is where edge computing, I think, is going to play a critical role with balancing the need to have a large central storage on the cloud versus having the, the user experience on the device. Thank you for the invitation to come to this evening. Um, so basically, I'd like to first think about, you know, when we talk about sensors and humans, we originally start to talk about quantified self. And I feel like now at this point in time, we have a perspective on really good sensors. We're able to collect data. And now the interpretation of that data is still one of the big I think together with the ability to sort of transfer the ownership of data or the use of data, as they were talking in the blockchain um, talks, I think this is like one of the last pieces that we need to sort of build the infrastructure around so that we can really have autonomy and actions. Because when we just have data and interpretation of data, like right now, we just end up with a lot of numbers like sort of quantifying who we are as a person or kind of what our state is at a certain point in time. But it doesn't really give us anything that's actionable. And many times if we think about ourselves, you know, we, we do tons of things throughout the day. We do breathing, we move our eyes, we move our body. And most of this is done basically without our knowledge. So we can't really regulate our breathing. We can't regulate our own brain waves very easily. And I like to take that same inspiration when I think about wearables design. And one of the, basically what I'm imagining for the future and what we're also building at Eden Technologies is bringing together three key metrics um, and data, data streams, the heart rate, motion, and neurological features. And I think if we can bring these together and fuse them in a nice way and allow the output of these characterizations to be transferred to other products and services, then we'll have like full integration between wearable sensors and the way that the world can react to people. Because really I like to think about wearables more as a way to help people live the lives that they want to live. And taking over some autonomy and understanding is really what I think has to happen. And when I say interpretation, you know, right now if we take sensor data and we want to extract motion uh, is relatively easy to do. We can determine if a person is walking or running or sleeping. Uh, wearables are getting much better at also determining things like sleep staging and determining individual biomarkers. But really, at the end of the day, it's the context and the effect that you can then have on the person's environment. So it doesn't really help me to know that I only slept four hours if I don't know what what I need to change in my life to help me sleep eight hours and feel more refreshed the next day and be really be able to measure my, my cognition during the day. Because if we, do, if we don't have like all these different puzzle pieces, we don't have a full view of the, of the human. So at Eden, essentially what we're doing, uh, we take brain imaging technology and we make it mobile and ubiquitous. So you might know things like um, EEG or MRI, these terms that are used to describe medical imaging that we do in laboratories. And at Eden, we develop sensors and electrodes and hardware and cloud platforms so that we can actually integrate the best of brain imaging onto devices like hearables. And we want to do this because earbuds are literally basically the most ubiquitous wearable device next to the watch that we have in the world. And if we can just functionalize these devices instead of sort of requiring a person to wear a different device in their life, then we can really integrate everything together. So the first product that we're releasing, our first brain computer interface, is a development kit which we're actually selling to OEMs and B2B customers to help them develop these more ubiquitous brain activity um, interaction devices. And currently our device is wirelessly connected to the cloud so we bring in all the data to the cloud, and there we can run our processing and algorithms and start to build this concept of interpretation. And while you might be very familiar with different things like motion or temperature sensors that are extracting very specific biomarkers, what we want to do at Eden is just add neuro features onto those existing sensor layers. So a few of the key strategic areas that we're developing products around include hearing, sleep tech, and wellness. And the reason for this is that if we can improve the way that ear, ear, um, ear aid devices are working, hearing aids, 
um, we can improve the way that people are experiencing life because life is really defined by what you see, what you feel, and what you can hear. Also in sleep technology, we're looking at how we can use these devices to much more ubiquitously identify sleep features, which we can then put into a neurofeedback loop with other products and services to really improve the way that a person is falling asleep, improve how they stay asleep, and then improve how they wake up the next day. And this is what we call the neurointelligence platform or neurofeedback loop. And so here, as a company, we work on the sensors, so developing conductive polymer electrodes, understanding how to pre-process brain activity data, understand how to bring it onto the cloud, and then through our API, deploying the solution back to other products and services. And we're coming to this question of why then use the cloud? You know, if we talk about managing multiple devices, do we actually want everything flowing back to one central place? And in designing wearables and designing around certain sensors, you have to th really think about why you're doing this. So generally, it's so you can connect your devices, store data, process it, and then also bring it back through the API. Like we were just talking to a customer today, and he was saying, well, why don't you just put everything into your desktop? Because I can just have the data stream into the desktop and then uh, work with an application. But the reason we want to do it in the cloud is we're always going to be more flexible and adaptable. So our current product, it includes our brain-computer interface with our bridge. And this bridge will eventually be replaced with a mobile application. But it's that gateway into the cloud, which is really going to be enabled, either from the hardware perspective or directly on device if we're integrating more advanced communications technologies like 5G. And I think this is relatively straightforward. It's very similar to a lot of other sensor devices that are out there. I think one of the big differences is that we're, when you work with brain-computer interfaces, you have to stream data at a very high data rate, I think, compared to other things like um, heart rate variability or motion sensors. So right now, we stream data, like sampled at 250 um, hertz. And we have two channels. So we're, we're steering quite a bit of data over the cloud. We're currently building infrastructure on Amazon Web Services. But even with this, you know, going from a brain box over BLE to a connection bridge, we're still able to get things below one second to upload the data, process it, and get interaction um, insights from it. And one of the applications we're working in, as I said, is sleep. Um, and if we can create neurofeedback loops with things like music, uh, we can create a way to help people fall asleep in a more natural, holistic way. So uh, a key thing that we do with our system is to process brain waves. Uh, the brain waves are essentially electrical signals that are operating between 0 and 40 or 60 hertz, depending on what window you want to look at. So we have to process these features, extract those features, and then look at how the, the brain is being affected by the environment of a person, for example, sleep and music. And if we can improve that, then we can give value to the customers. Uh, the architecture that we use is, I think, probably kind of similar to what other companies are using. We have a message broker on an application, and then our application has to talk to the application from a partner company such as Life, which is actually also in Berlin. Um, if you're, if you have time, you should go visit them at some point. Um, and our data flows first into a database, which is collecting the, the fast data. So you generally collect data and then you off, you offload it to a second database. And there you're going to then run your classifier and run your models. And you want to design this in such a way that it's going to be really efficient because you, you don't want a, a cloud which is lagging and taking a long time to, to process information. Um, because when you start to move from having one system or one device to having deployments of you know, hundreds or thousands of, of the devices, you run into a lot of issues of security, um, software updates, and you also want to understand how the device is being used by people. And this is something that you can do re really well with the cloud. Um, if you're only deploying everything onto a singular device, it can also be sometimes more difficult to get these usage statistics. Um, but even though the cloud is really well established right now, you know, we, we really can like look at our design and think, you know, do we need all these components? 
You know, we, we know what we need to digitize a signal. We know what we need to save a signal. But how can we change this, these things for the future? on the cloud versus having the, the user experience on the device. And the real value of having an edge device which can connect but also process and run its own models, um, whether those are machine learning models or more simplified models, the value is that you then don't have to send the user's data to the cloud. You don't have to worry as much about security and privacy issues. You can still maintain your API. You can also still maintain personalization because a lot of times we're just deploying, um, let's say, neuro features or models that generalize across the entire population, but we still want to learn about an individual person. And if we can do that on the device, then we just make it actually much more easy to create personal experiences as opposed to creating generalized experiences like a generalized playlist on Spotify or YouTube where you don't really feel like it's um, giving you what you need as a person. So. Our company right now is doing proof of concepts with a lot of partner companies. We're now in the phase where we're validating different biomarkers for things like sleep. We do this with companies such as Takeda, a large pharmaceutical company, which has an interest in patient tracking and digital therapeutics. And our next phase is to miniaturize and deploy our systems over the next couple of years to basically prove the business cases with uh, some of our customers. But then long term, I see the, the direction of moving away from the cloud and more towards edge computing. I think this is also where blockchain, as we discussed, is going to become really critical because it's going to allow us to, you know, share our person, like share our biomarkers, share our needs more, I think, easily and intuitively throughout the entire ecosystem of connected devices and services. Um, so I'd be very interested to extend conversations about uh, the cloud, about uh, how we can add different sensor layers on top of one another through sensor fusion to connect the brain to heart rate to temperature and create new product experiences for, for customers. Thank you very much.